During this interview, my guest and I will be mentioning Alexa's name a lot, so if you have an Alexa device in the room, you might want to mute it. This episode and the next will be a little longer than usual just because there is so much to talk about for usages of smart speakers and skills and application. As you'll hear, the examples of applications are very diverse. I really didn't want to cut anything out, so I didn't. I hope that it inspires you in your journey of figuring out where the heck your brand fits into the voice first technology. So without further ado, welcome to the Sound in Marketing podcast. Davis Biskey is currently the chief evangelist for Alexa and Echo at Amazon. He has been a professional speaker, trainer, and evangelist for over a decade. He has taught full day courses on many topics, including voice design, natural language understanding, mobile, and the cloud. Dave has helped launch numerous technology platforms and devices while at both Microsoft and Amazon. He is an author for LinkedIn, hosts the Alexa Dev Chat podcast, alexadevchat.com, and can be found online at thedavedev.com and Twitter at thedavedev. Welcome to the Sound and Marketing Podcast. Thanks for having me. Excited to be here. I have wanted to talk to you for a while because I've been seeing you on all the socials and uh, really enjoyed voice den and um i don't know if you've done voice talks yet but that sounded right up your alley as well i think i was in the first one okay that's what i thought really really enjoying uh, what the voice community has been putting out there um with webinars and free events during all of this it's been really really nice and helpful it's kept me sane through all this too right the community you know yeah. it's great to see uh, the inclusiveness and everyone come together even with you know st the stuff that's going on on social right now it's just, it's just a, it's a, it's a positive vibe. I'm, I'm happy to be just a tiny part of it. For those listening that don't know what an Alexa chief evangelist is, could you kind of explain what you do and what that title means? I just happened to be the first person on our developer marketing team. I had had a background as a developer evangelist at Microsoft for almost seven years going in. Really love technology, love being part of communities. Um, and I had the opportunity to just, you know, it's whatever needed to be done. So people who I've known for years now remember when I was the one going out and doing the hackathons and I was doing the first content to try and explain what this new world of voice was. Um, you know, I started a podcast to kind of open the veil behind what was actually happening in Seattle with Amazon so that people could hear from other people besides me, uh, you know, came up with the original, you know, just original plans with a lot of the teams. So like, how do we certify skills? What is a skill? I used to do, um, I started doing office hours, which were like, ask me anything, which were, we still do, which is my, my favorite, just talking one-on-one -on -one with community. Um, and then, you know, over time, it's been all sorts of different jobs, both internally and externally, but it's basically whatever needs to be done. We have this Alexa Accelerator program for people creating really you know, unique things within voice. It's part of the Alexa fun. Uh, and I was really, really lucky to uh, have been part of the, the finals and, and kind of gave a talk there. And I, I met someone and she said, I'm an intrapreneur. And I was like, what's that? And she's like, I'm like an entrepreneur, but I work inside large organizations. And I'm like, that's me. Like, I love being part of these big companies with lots of people because I feel like I'm I'm part of something, right? I feel like it can make really big shifts and change, but I also get really bored when everything's been figured out and when there's all these processes in place. And so that's basically been my job. It's kind of like an entrepreneur within Alexa. The past, uh, I'd say two years, it's been uh, focused around uh, voice within brands. So you'll see a lot of talks there. And I mean, I'm just a very, very tiny cog in, I mean, there's thousands of people now in the org. The really cool part is to see what's coming. And so that's where I come alive with my job is like, you find out about the really cool new stuff and you get to talk about it. It's being a teacher, but it's also being uh, creating awareness because there are people who, you know, maybe they have an Alexa device or an Echo and they, they haven't, you know, done much beyond just everyday questions and music and things like that. I like that entrepreneur idea. You get to actually like see the progress that's happening. And um, what's really cool about your function working with Alexa and Echo devices is that it's not only like the progression of voice, but these instruments are very, very new. So being on the, the forefront of 
starting from scratch, basically. That's really exciting. You realize stuff about yourself too. You make so many assumptions because it is unknown. Like in the beginning, when I was first looking at this, looking back, uh, gosh, now six years, I was thinking this was more like mobile devs because I had done and worked with mobile developers on Fire TV at Microsoft. I had done Windows Phone. Um, and then I started to realize, oh no, this is more restful services. So maybe this is cloud developers, right? But then I'm like, oh wait, it's not because there's this whole talking to human beings, which is a tech. So it's kind of like when there's something entirely new, it's a little bit of everything kind of mixed in and then some entirely new stuff too. So it's been this learning process uh, for me and it, that's been part of it. You know, it's like every day you find out something new. The, the smart speaker technology is an awesome opportunity for people to go back 100 years to what a radio was in their living room and they got to sit around it together and it was a communicative experience. In the time that we're in right now where everybody's kind of home or mostly at home, uh, everyone's together. So what have you seen recently in um, the, the creativeness that's been explored through smart speakers in skills and just function in general. We were an oratory society and a people long. I mean, you talk about the Gutenberg revolution and the, and the printing press, which really made, um, you know, the written word accessible to everyone. It was, you know, talk was not cheap. Talk was everything. If you take the Bible and you take scripture, when you had rabbis that would quote it, they had entire chapters memorized. And if you said something wrong, people around you corrected that, right? And we live in this age where talk is cheap, right? And you don't believe everything that's, that's, that's written. I think we've also lost that art of communication. You know, when you're communicating, it's, you need to understand that behind every question is a questionnaire, right? Just, we're all human beings. And that's what's got me most excited through all of this is when I was a little kid, I would get excited about Back then it was Commodore. I'd get excited about computers and I'd go and tell my parents and they'd be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And that was a theme throughout my entire career. Like I felt excitement and I saw this and there was just a barrier to tech and everything, you know, because we had to, we couldn't have computers really understand human, the intention. But I remember being like, why is this so hard? And it just can every, you know, I've been fortunate enough. I got to be part of the desktop revolution uh, and client server and then watch the internet grow and start and do HTML pages and mobile and cloud. And through all of this, we just left people behind. Like I gave up on explaining to family members or people in the neighborhood what it is I even did. They just didn't understand, uh, you know, and then when smartphones came, you know how many apps don't get updated and OSs don't get updated and there just had to be a better way. And now we're at this point where like, I was talking to my mother-in-law and she was telling me things she does with Alexa, like asking when 30 rocks on that I'd even know was there. It was a skill. They're excited and use this as much as my kids and I do. And I've never seen that. And that I think was what's really got me excited is it's back to human beings. And it's, it's also to see, you know, during this pandemic, um, just to share with you, like skill usage. And so I'm not sure if your, your listeners know skill usage, although a lot of people have used skills now. I think the stats are somewhere around three out of four people that uh, have an Alexa device have used at least a skill. When we created Alexa, we knew people were going to have conversations about all sorts of things. And we wanted to create a way for anybody to teach Alexa to have a conversation about something. And we do that as human beings in understanding context. And so you and I know what day of the month it is. We know what the weather's like outside where you are. You know, we have some background. We talked a little bit before this, there's context. And so the AI had really had to learn that of what is actually, when I say something, what does that mean in, the, in that context? And that's the way skills are. So if I create and I wanna have a conversation about fitness, I need to understand what a base metabolic rate is, what a heart rate is, I mean, all, all of these things, the vernacular in a lexicon, and that's really, what Alexa skills are is you can have a conversation about anything and then you can share these with everybody. So we go through a certification process where Amazon, we review it and make sure that it does what it says it does and it's safe for Amazon customers. 
And then we have also released over time because we heard from people saying, hey, I'm not a developer, but I still want to create these conversations for Alexa. So we have blueprints, which anybody can go to blueprints.amazon.com and do these things visually, right? And so here we are in the past three months, and I can tell you that just in the past two months, skill usage worldwide is up over 65%. We're seeing, you know, Alexa voice search like on Fire TV, that's also increasing, you know, where you can ask, you can even go through not just Amazon Prime, but Netflix, Hulu. It's just a natural way um, to be able to ask for things. It's spontaneous, it's inclusive. Uh, it just gets these, these interfaces out of the way. And what's great about this is you don't have to trust Dave. One, you could ask Alexa yourself. You can say, Alexa, what are your top skills? Or Alexa, I want to play a game. So a lot of this you can do with your voice now. And we've enabled reviews too, so you can give... Uh, you know, a five-star review just with your voice. You can give feedback too. Like if you have a suggestion for us, you can actually say, Alexa, I have feedback. But what you can do outside of the mobile app, what I suggest to people is just go to amazon.com slash skills. And then you can look like anything else on Amazon. So you could say, I want this category, four stars and up. And you'll see some of these skills have, you know, like 20,000 plus customer reviews. And they are saying, what are they actually doing and engaging Popular categories are, you know, ambient sounds, you know, when you go to sleep or if you just want to relax. I actually have one. If I'm writing a little bit of code or, or um, I'm creating a, a presentation or something, I have a fireplace sound. It's just like the crackling of the hearth. Games are a super popular category and continue to grow. There's a lot of innovation there. Like you'll see Disney has stories so you can hear from your favorite characters i've seen crossovers with brands with movies so like kung fu panda you're talking to the characters and and you know kids love that uh, blueprints you can even build your own story times so you can make it about them and then they can listen and they can they can get um you know entertained with that and then one of the other things uh we've added is stuff like a wash your hands song so try and get little ones to wash your hands for 30 seconds. Uh, you can say, Alexa, wash your hands, and she'll sing along for 20, 30 seconds. And so it makes it fun, you know, as a sing-along song. And I, st I still do that, you know, I'm such a dad. Like I'm, I'm doing the sing-along song in my kitchen and my kids are laughing at me, you know, but it's, so it's just a fun way to kind of involve. So I've seen a lot of um, innovation in that space. And I would, you know, that's a really great area to start uh, experimenting in in now why people are, are hungry for content and looking for this. Another area where I've seen a lot of growth is going through multiple modalities. And so I'll give you an example. I use MyFitnessPal as a way to track my calories and my macros for the day. Uh, and I was in the mobile app logging and it's like, hey, you know, you can just enable our Alexa skill now. And you could say, Alexa, log weight. And I had this for Fitbit because Fitbit also does it. So it's, it's like, you know, uh, I'm working and I haven't gotten on the treadmill yet. And I just want to ask how many steps I've had. Now I can do that with how many calories I have left for my fitness pound stuff. So it's just, you know, we find that very popular getting the information because um, it's very, you know, there's certain categories where voice really excels. And when you know the specific piece of information that you want, a very specific data point, nothing's faster than voice to be able to do that, right? You just ask and immediately you get uh, an answer. So I'm seeing innovation go across there, playing video and sound, you know, because devices like our Echo Show and Dot and Fire TV, I love playing like music trivia and other stuff. So if you play song quiz, you, you can play against another anonymous person. At the same time, you can compete in like 80s music and 90s music. Um, and you're seeing stuff on your screen. You're not just hearing it too. Um, and so you'll see that and you'll see innovation. There's stuff across uh, bar, board games uh, and things like that. There's, um, there's even, uh, if you know the Dungeons and Dragon D20 system, there's actually Starfinder, which is based off of that, which is a sci-fi universe, uh, has, has an Alexa skill and it's all professionally narrated and you're going through a real campaign and it has all of that lore and it's just really, really cool. I'm seeing innovation across all of those things. And that's just with skills. I mean, we have Alexa Auto, so the ability to be in a car and ask like, when do I need to get my oil changed or be in your car? Like I have an Echo Auto and I could drop in on the family, which drop in is a way to actually drop in on a, a device and do a call. And so when I was driving home from the airport, I would just drop in or I can make an announcement, which would hit every device. I'd be like, dad's home in 20 minutes. 
The whole idea for us is to put Alexa anywhere that you want to have those conversations. So whether that's on your phone, it's on your computer, it's on a, a smart speaker. These things, and you're seeing in my ears, I know the audience can't see, but these are actually Echo Buds. What's really cool about these, well, one, they have Bose noise canceling. Uh, if you've ever had that tech, uh, it's great, especially on planes. Um, but I am, you know, we're in the summertime and going through the pandemic, I'm like, I need sun, right? Like I have to be really careful of my mental state. And so I try to get a little bit of sun every day. And so when I go out on my deck, I have these and I just ask Alexa for music. And so I can play, pause. It was funny when I first got them, I'm like, where's the buttons and the controls? And I'm like, Dave, you're so dumb. Like, you know, you can just talk and use your voice now to control music, which is what I do on smart speakers. So to have that in your ear and it's all noise canceling, you can hear Alexa, you can like, I'll set a timer for how long I'm so I don't get sunburnt. It's just really, it's a very engaging uh, experience. And so you'll see more and more of that. We have echo frames where they're in glasses too. Wherever you want to have the conversation, it's seamless and it has everything that you see. And that runs all the skills. So I could literally play one of those story-based games too while I'm sitting out in the sun. Cause you know, phones overheat. Like yes. my phone is like, in five minutes, it's like, I'm melting, you know, but my Echo Buds run fine. So I can continue to be entertained that way. During this time of seclusion, I'm thinking of nursing homes. Now family can't visit. Now they're really isolated. I've heard of uh, reports that smart speakers can kind of befriend the elderly. Like that's something really big. That's really, really exciting. And then the idea of bringing voter information and um, statistics and understanding politics to a generation that's not watching broadcast TV. So you're, access you're making it accessible to a whole new generation of people that we've been telling for years, go out and vote, go out and vote. But now they're actually getting the information in a way that they're willing to receive it. If you go to bit.ly slash COVID voice, um, that'll send you to a blog post around some of the things we've been doing in the devices org. And that does include um, giving echo shows to hospitals. One of our neighbors is a nurse. And that was, you know, one of the first things we heard about was, you know, like, you don't realize how much you touch as a human being until, you know, touching stuff becomes a thing, you know? And so the ability to just drop in on a, on a patient and talk um, and there's no technical barrier. They just do drop in. I'll, I'll share a personal story. This goes back a couple of years at the Consu Consumer Electronics Show in January, which is CES. Um, and I was giving a keynote. And I think around the time it was, yeah, it, you'll, you'll see there's like a picture of me. I, I think it was, we were announcing 25,000 skills and that was over 100,000. And uh, I started getting a little teary eyed on stage, if people remember, because right before I got this LinkedIn message and it said a grateful son and his dad, who was 92, was having a stroke and said, Alexa, help. And an ambulance was sent and he was able to get uh, medical attention. And he just like he listed this whole story. And then he sent me he's like, here's my dad at his 93 birthday and sent me pictures of him blowing out candles Aww. on his cake and everything. And I was like, it's like what you're saying. It's so personal. Uh, and we find that like we put, this goes back years ago, but we, we gave devices into a retirement community just to get feedback. Uh, and one of the, one of the quotes is, uh, it was a gentleman saying, um, you know, when you, I never, when you get to be my age, just being able to hear a voice uh, and communicate is, is huge throughout the day. And I think, you know, that's, I think people are starting to figure that out. Like even somebody like me, who's I'm introverted, which people are always like, what? And I'm like, I just like to talk a lot, but the way I recharge is introverted, right? So I've been able to handle this a little bit better than, you know, like my daughters are extroverted. And so it, I've seen that, that, that um, it's almost like a, a tie was severed on how you refuel. And so just being able to communicate and have conversations, whether it's an AI or a human being, as a person is huge, right? I find that I can actually formulate my ideas and ways of thinking better just by communicating to another person. Because you actually hear yourself saying, and you're like, well, that sounds really stupid when it's not in my head, right? And it's just, it's so important to have that um, across all ages. So we continue 
uh, to see that with, with devices. Um, it's a way that my kids, they can drop in on grandmom. Uh, I have heard stories on my podcast of, of interviewing hosts where they do weekly uh, dinners with grandmom uh, and they just have like the show right at the dinner table, right? It's like nobody's holding a phone. It's just, it's there, it's easy. It's with blueprints, you can share where you could create information. Um, you know, maybe you have a parent with Alzheimer's just forgetting things. You can create a skill with like everything. When they were married, uh, how old their kids are, names, and then you just share it with their Amazon account. And now their Alexa is now enabled with all of that. It's, it's funny. My mother-in-law always teases me because every time I see her, she goes, I asked Alexa who David Spitsky was, still doesn't know. You know? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, I need to make a skill and like enable it. So just for her, you know, I'm seeing that even within my own family of trying to get to information and just asking for it, you become very comfortable and used to. And uh, even with COVID, um, you know, we worked with the CDC to make sure, because there's so much different information out there that um, you're getting accurate information. So you can say things to Alexa, like how do I make a face mask? Uh, what do I do if I think I have coronavirus? And, uh, or even call the coronavirus helpline and it will actually make a call um, if you have that communications enabled to a local um, resource for you to get help. And, or you could ask for it in, in Spanish, you know, as we're going into this um, political season, like what are their stances on each of these candidates and what are all, and you're getting accurate information. You're not getting spin on that. It's very random throughout the day, how often you're looking at your phone, but voice, there's a routine. And you can see this. And as you ask and you talk to brands and you talk to skill builders, you'll see that where there's a spike maybe in the morning when people are making coffee and they're asking for something's called a flash briefing where you can get news. So I, I actually like to get good news. So I get good news in the morning and then I get some tech news. I get like a word of the day, but you can customize that whatever you want. So you're, you're getting all that done in the morning uh, for some people it was commute. And then you'll see a spike at lunch. And what's been interesting with the pandemic is you, that that routine has shifted a little bit to more of weekend because it's less nine to five sitting in a car commute schedule, but you still see that routine. There's an engagement at specific times. I know for me, it's like in the morning where I am right now in an unfinished space in, in this in podcast is like I shut the lights off at night. So part of the morning routine while I'm making my coffee from upstairs is to turn all the lights on down here. So there's like a smart home engagement at that point. And then I have that at night when I'm going to bed, I've created and a, a routine I should explain too. Um, and Alexa will even make routines for you. Uh, but a routine is basically a way for you to create a task that does multiple things. And that could include smart home things like changing lights or setting temperature. It can include playing music or sounds. And it can also include uh, firing off skills. So for example, you could have like a, a routine you call um, thinking time. And when you do that, it dims the lights by 50% and it starts playing one of the ambient skills. Maybe it's like I mentioned, a, a fireplace, right? And then Alexa, you can make Alexa say something like saying time to think. And it's just a, a way to kind of connect all of those things um, uh, together. But what we're seeing is it's more of like a weekend routine, you know, while people are not uh, commuting as much. But it's an important point to bring up is that is touch points that you can count on throughout the day. So if you know that people are playing your game at night after school, that's the time to, we have these things called in-skill purchasing where uh, developers are making thousands a month and some developers are even making tens of thousands a month uh, where you could be like, hey, uh, for 99 cents right now, I'm gonna give you the premium version of this, which is like three more chapters of this game. Would you like that? And all you have to say is yes or no. It, re it reminds me of growing up, I had so many odd jobs growing up. One of them was at a movie theater. And I still remember this. It was, uh, would you like to try the super combo special? It's a large popcorn and a large soda for the same price as a medium popcorn and a medium soda. Right. But people had their cash out and it was right there in the moment. That's the way voice is because when you're on Alexa, you're already tied to your Amazon account. So you're literally just saying yes or no. And you could do that with, uh, I've seen content creators, music, uh, podcasts, like you can create subscriptions say, would you like to be a pro subscriber for, you know, 99 cents a month? A lot of information to unpack, but do take the time to rewind and refer back because Dave has a lot of gold in there for us all. For more of the Sound and Marketing Podcast, don't forget to follow, subscribe, and share. 
You can find us on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play, iHeartRadio, Pandora, and Stitcher. For inquiries on producing and developing your own podcast, or for inquiries on sonic branding and sonic branding consultation availabilities, you can find me at Dreamer Productions. That's D-R-E-A-M-R Productions.com, LinkedIn, and Facebook. You can also email me at Gina, J-E-A-N-N-A, at DreamerProductions.com. All links will be provided in the show notes. This episode was produced by Dreamer Productions and hosted, written, and edited by me, Gina Isham. Let's make this world of sound more intriguing, more unique, and more and more on brand.